What's up, everybody? Welcome to Game Moose episode 134. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Tiffert, alongside the ghost with the most, Drew McMillan. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good morrow. Uh, yeah. So, welcome to the Game Moose podcast, of course. Uh, you can find us each and every Monday at noon Eastern Standard Time over on game boostcom as well as podcast services around the globe, including... Stitcher and iTunes and all kinds of podcast places, not Spotify, though. Spreaker. Spreaker. Uh, we're not on SoundCloud because we're not rappers. Um, uh, well, we could be. We could be. We could We could be SoundCloud rappers. We're maybe. not on Tidal either. No. Oh, no, definitely not on Tidal. Um, Kanye and Jay-Z have not approached us uh, to be on Tidal, so we're, uh, we're going to try, but... So if you like what we do, of course, if you listen to us on podcast services, it would be awesome of you to rate us, leave us a review, all that good stuff. It really helps out our metrics and all that good stuff. Uh, also, if you are watching this on uh, the YouTube channel, even though you're not watching a video of us, you're listening to us speak with us uh, still, uh, it'd be awesome if you uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, left a like comment on the video, all that cool stuff as well. Ring that bell. Ring that bell. As they That's say. what the YouTubers say. Yeah. Uh, for weird reasons. Uh, yeah. If you, if you want to see every time we publish a video, um, hit the notification bell and you'll, you'll get a notification every time we, get uh, a notification. we share a video. Yeah. So, um, also, uh, tell your friends about the podcast. Share. If you like it, share it with your friends and family. Tell us that we're cool and we exist. Yeah. If you think we're cool and you think we exist. And yeah. You want to share it with people. We're not just, Corporeal forms yeah. of ourselves. Yeah. 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 Um, the Broccoli Brock McLaughlin, unable to join us this week. No. He's in Van Clover. Yeah, he's in the Coover. V- visiting his mother. Yeah. Uh, so, moms. Uh, housekeeping notes for yes. this week. So, first of all, next week, Drew, for the very first time, I looked this up, by the way. Yeah. For the very first time in the history of the Game Moose podcast, mm. I will not be on next week's episode. Factual. Factual. So, Drew, I'm leaving the, the 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 show in good hands. However, we have a guest host. So, tell us about our guest host. Okay. Yeah. So, a couple things are happening here. Uh, number one, I, I I am hosting the show, right. uh, uh, I, which is a first for me. Since to be since, fair, we all really host since, the show since episode zero. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, I mean, you you lead the show. You set the tone and the pace. Uh, yeah. And we are going to be joined by uh, Bryn Potty, uh, aka the uh, newly single gamer. And uh, he's going to come on and, and talk about uh, uh, his uh, a very funny YouTube uh, series that he's got going and just talk about uh, stuff he's playing and, and, you know, just be be a, a guest host on the show like like uh, other people like like Sean Capri and uh, Camille yeah. and other people we've had on the show. He, uh, Bryn's a real good dude. Very funny. Uh, does a bunch of like a bunch of like stand up and improv here in the city. Um, if. Uh, if uh, if you like what he does, you can you can definitely check out some of his his live shows. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, I know you've shared some of his stuff on the channel. So yeah, so I've, sh- I've shared some. I of don't his know his YouTube page, so you you'd have to plug it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll 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 you'll you can go like I could tell you a YouTube URL. Sure, but he'll tell like, you all about it. Next that's time. not going to help you. Uh, yeah. You just go if you go to the Facebook page or see on our Twitter, you'll see us uh, just talking about it a little bit. Um, but if you go to YouTube and su- search for new- newly single gamer, you'll find it. It's uh, it's real funny stuff. Um, uh, his his Mega Man X one I find especially funny because of some very good wordplay in that one. You'll watch it and find out. There you go. Uh, but Ryan, you're doing something I'm, this week. I am busy uh, all week. You'll actually be seeing my face quite a lot this week if you want to. So uh, over on Twitch.tv slash Ryan Turford this yeah. week, I will be streaming <laughs> World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth launching Monday. So the day that this podcast goes live uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this evening. You can find me on there uh, playing some World of Warcraft. Basically, uh, I'll be up uh, streaming when the servers launch at 6 p.m. on Monday, which is a weird time. It's, I guess it's like because it's like midnight in England. That's why it's going live at that time. It's really weird. It doesn't matter. Um, so I'll be live provided the servers work. I will still be live if the servers don't work and we'll play some MTG Arena or something if the servers are down or whatever. But basically, my whole streaming schedule is on uh, the, the website right now uh, as you're listening to this. Not right now while we're recording this, but it will be live on, on game-moose.com. You'll get to see it. We're basically, I'll yeah. be streaming for 30 hours this week. Yeah, I mean, it's some exciting stuff. Big stuff coming to uh, World of Warcraft. Yeah. If, uh, you, if you're a WoW fan, 
Um, there's some interesting stuff there for you yeah. to check out. And then if you if you're new, if you wanted to try it, like now's a good time to like this, just now jump is in. the perfect time to jump in because it's a brand new expansion, which only happens once every like two to three years, essentially, yeah. um, where basically there's a new level cap up to level 120. Um, if you buy the game now, you actually get a level boost to 110 so you can start. Right with the new content if you want to. Yeah. Um, if you want to level a new character from scratch, that's cool too. There, if you've never played World of Warcraft before, there's um, you can play up to level one, uh, level twenty for free. Yeah. So you can go get a feel for the game if if you're interested in it. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be playing the fuck out of World of Warcraft because I'm hooked again, Drew. So Ryan, this is weird to me because they usually add. I mean, the pattern has been for a while. Maybe they probably deviated from this lately because at a certain point you can only do so much. But right. with previous expansions, basically, as they add new expansions, they add things like new areas and new races. Yeah. But they haven't really done that for this Actually, one. they have. There are new ra- new areas. So, but, the, but but not in the way that we're used to. Like, the new areas and new races are... Well, they're doing something they're different. different for both. So, yeah. uh, new areas, there are two new continents. There's Kulturas, uh, uh, which is the Alliance continent that you go to. And the horde content, a continent of uh, Zaldir, or uh, it's yeah. the troll continent essentially. Yeah. And basically, um, that you depending on if you're alliance or horde, yeah. Most of the campaign, uh, you play on the continent that's associated with your uh, sort of alliance, essentially, with yeah. your alliance or horde. Um, and then you get mich- story missions on the other continent when you're higher level. Yeah. Essentially. Um, and also, there are new races this time around. They're called allied races. So yeah. They're not necessarily. They're they're almost like the Echo Fighters that they introduced in Smash Brothers, where yeah. they're kind of like plays on existing races that already exist. Yeah. And there are actually four. There there were f- uh, four races already added at the end of Legion. There were, we had the the Lightforge Draenei, the yeah. uh, Void Elves, the uh, Nightborn, and the High Mountain Torrent. Yeah. But then this time around, they're adding. F- we already know four new races are coming. With Battle for Azeroth as well, that are allied races. So we got the Dark Iron Dwarves coming. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Saldari Trolls, as well as we're getting the t- Kul Tar- Terras Humans, which are basically like humans that can also be druids for yeah. the first time, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and then you also get the um, the 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 Draenor Orcs, right. essentially the Orcs, basically from the the past coming to the future, essentially. Right. When we visited uh, Draenor in Warlords of Draenor. Yeah. So uh, and. Uh, in addition to new areas that they've we've never been to, right? They're kind of remixing some of the existing ones, like they did with Cataclysm, right? Yeah. So like stuff like Lordaeron, yeah. uh, which has been part of the Horde for a long time, yeah. it's been like where the Undercity is located. Yeah, that's where the uh, the Forsaken, the Undead, have lived for a long time. They're getting pushed out. Yeah. Uh, the Lordaeron's coming back to the Alliance. Yeah. Essentially, basically, now they're sort of splitting each co- uh, continent to uh, each. Uh, faction. So the Horde basically control all of um, uh, Kalimdor now, except for the Exodar, where the, the Draenei are, essentially. Right. Where their crash spaceship is, essentially. It's like a little island. Yeah. And then on the um, Eastern Kingdom side, the Alliance control the entire thing, except for Quoth Loss, the Blood Elf city. The Blood Elves, yeah. Essentially. And I wouldn't be too surprised if in another expansion or two... They push them fully they out. They push them fully out. Because, like, in this one, I like the... Uh, in Kalimdor, the Night Elves city is going, right? It, well, they burned it down. They burned it down. It's it's gone. It's gone, you gone can, in the game. You can't, even, you can't even go there. That anymore. event is, has has happened. Yeah, that event has happened just like the, the invasion of Lordaeron has already happened has as happened, well. That yeah. happened this week. Cool. Which was really awesome. That's really neat. See, like, that's the kind of, st- that's the kind of, like, live team stuff that I think is really cool, right? Mm-hmm. Those kind of, like, world events that change the world without you having to buy a whole new expansion. Um, Oh, yeah, it was all rolled into the Legion content, so you don't even have to own Battle for Azeroth to actually see those events happen. And it's what's cool is they uh, took a different approach to them where they they really weaved uh, a lot of the story into it with impressive cinematics, uh, which they kind of did for some of the Legion campaign as well. But it was very much like, especially in the Battle for Lordaeron, it was like, you, you go do these objectives... And then after you finish them, there's another cinematic that plays, and it sort of goes back and forth between those. Yeah, which you don't really see too often with World of Warcraft. So, and and the cinematics were incredible, especially the 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 battle the the hand the hand drawn um, Burning of Teldra show one. Right, I really like the the It's called Warbringer Sylvanas, but yeah, it has it, it basically shows how the tree gets burned down. It's really cool. I'm I haven't seen that one yet, but I'm excited to watch it. I watched a little bit of some of like the CGI cinematics, which are really yeah. cool. So that's exciting, Ryan. You sound 
Pretty flipping pumped. I, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait for this. Well, it'll be fun. It'll be, uh, it'll be fun to tune in. Um, I... Uh, so I want to say that I was uh, I jumped on last night. Uh, was it last night or the night before? Uh, watching some of a friend of the show, Sean Capri, live yeah, boy live streaming on Twitch. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, Sean Capri, of we the nerdy, uh, does some really good uh, live streaming content. You should yeah. check him out too. He's, uh, na- he's now on Twitch though. He is Twitch.tv slash Sean Capri. Yeah, and and he's got some good stuff. He got a good setup, man. Yeah, uh, I was watching him. Uh, he, he and Bobby were playing. Um, uh, uh, was it the um, we happy few, uh, okay. and uh, yeah, and then he was it was really nice. Give me a shout out. So uh, as usual, returning that shout out. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Check well, he's been out. doing some streamcast stuff. Where basically, like, so there was one night where I was watching while playing some more of the Warcraft, and yeah. I was interacting in the chat with Sean and the rest of them. But there were like five people. Yeah. on the call. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like 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 in this case, uh, uh, Bobby from uh, the, the Nintendo Guru. Yeah. Uh, he he was he was on uh, yeah. chatting with folks, and so I jumped on and just said, "Hey, what up?" And uh, yeah, yeah. Also, speaking of Sean Capri, we should we shouldn't mention it just yet. But we should hit tease. Yeah, something's coming. Something's coming with something's Sean. Something's coming. Sean, Sean, will, Sean will be on the show in, Again. In, in a very special way, and we're very excited. Yeah. So We'll talk about that later. Yeah. More to come. Uh, I expect news for that to come near the end of the month. Uh, near the time for Fan Expo, because Fan Expo is coming at the end of the month. Yeah. Uh, I'll be around at the same time. Uh, yeah, I mean, close to. Um, we should mention again, um, we, uh, Brock, uh, uh, myself, and... Uh, uh, I'm not sure, Ryan. Are you are you going to make it? Out? I'm going to try try and come at least one day, just because yeah. I'm working most of that week yeah. um, outside the podcast. So. Yeah. So we'll we will we will be walking around the floor uh, at Fan Expo. Uh, I'm going to be chatting with some folks. I'm going to go over and see like our friends at Cybertronic Spree and uh, a few other booths. I'm so. so excited that there's a Blizzard booth finally. At yeah, Fan we're going to check out the, check out some of the cosplay. I'm going to take some photos and stuff. So look for some st- stuff on the site, and I'll talk about it and. Um, you know, if there's some conversations that uh, are are uh, that, that are shareable, then we'll we'll put that uh, into the podcast feed in some form yeah. or another. Um, also, uh, yeah, there's I mean, there's some more written comment uh, content coming your way on Facebook on the on the the, the, the website. Um, lots of stuff happening. We're oh we're, we're we're reaching. Uh, uh, the, we're uh, reaching critical mass. Game, well, game moosecom we're, we're quickly reaching season two, I would say. We're also um, like at the point where the, the fall game season is about to happen. Yeah. We're at the tipping point. Stuff, Basically, Stuff's going to get nuts. With uh, Battle for Azeroth releasing this week, as well as a couple other games, which we'll talk about yeah. in the game rundown, this is basically the start of the, the fall video game season is yeah. this week, I think. Um, it's safe to say. So to that end, you've been playing World of Warcraft, getting ready for that expansion. I've yeah. been playing, as you know, Destiny 2. Yeah. Getting ready for the Forsaken expansion, which I am I am quite excited about. I am hesitantly excited. There's yeah. some stuff I'm like, uh, this might be a bummer. But well, especially after what happened with the last two expansion packs, I don't blame you. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Warmind was better. Mm-hmm. War, Warmind was definitely a better expansion. As a matter of fact, I would say that Warmind, I would say, was worth my money but in terms of like the content that they covered you would have expected the whole like warmind story to be ha- to have more of a spotlight on it right like mm-hmm. the whole like like rasputin is a huge character in that world and it felt like they were building towards something with him and then like you go and you free rasputin in this expansion and you think that something big will come of that but they sort of leave that hanging mm-hmm. uh, and like meeting anna bray there's not like there not much really happens in that regard and the like you see a worm god for the first time, which is a big character and sort of like one of the big villains that's sort of been behind the scenes for a while. Uh, and it just sort of feels like the ramifications for that stuff aren't huge. Like it just sort of like we're, we're kind of mid story with that stuff. And you would have I would have liked to have seen it be more of a complete narrative. Right. The narrative for Curse of Osiris is virtually non-existent. <laughs> uh, it's not good at all. Uh, the, the most remarkable thing that happens in Curse of Osiris is um, seeing St. 14 uh, uh going to see his uh, his tomb, the tomb of Saint 14, which is really, really cool, but takes literally weeks of grinding to get to, because you have to do like a, basically you just have to do public events and strikes and stuff over and over and over and over and over again, right. and get these random uh, 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 item drops as part of doing these events, and eventually you'll just get enough stuff to unlock it, right? Mm-hmm. You have to do these uh, 
Brother Vance gives you these little prophecies and it just says get like get X amount of these random things that you get when you finish public events or uh, uh, or strikes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So if you're not doing those things, first of all, then you're not getting that stuff. And even at that, you get those things. What you get is random and the number of them that you get is random. So there's no way for you to reliably say I'm going to get to St. 14 by time. That sounds like a terrible system. It's really frustrating. (laughs) Wasn't that the whole reason? Like didn't didn't like the randomness in Destiny 1 turn people off? So why would they go back to that? Yeah, like the the RNG is really frustrating and it's still there and it's still quite bad. Like they've tried to do things to mitigate it. So one of the things that frustrates me is like I've gotten since I started playing again, I've received four exotics, right? So exotics are pretty rare and they drop pretty, yeah. pretty infrequently. All four of those exotics are exotics I already had. Well, that's no good. Yeah. And they said that like one of the things they're working on is trying to make it so that the the RNG doesn't give you the same stuff over and over again. Like they're trying to, but like anecdotally, I haven't seen that in action. It still feels right. frustrating. It's like how when Wizards said that the buy a box promo next is a fate. Yeah. Uh, was basically uh, they increased the drop rate in ma- treasure chest because the treasure chest exclusive. On yeah. Your online was increased 200 percent. Literally, I watched uh, a stream with uh, um, MTG streamer Ma- Saffron Olive the other day. He opened 300 treasure chests and didn't get one. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's a- that's all you need to know. Yeah, Anyways, it, it, it feels like it that. Over. Yeah. Uh, so I continue to, I mean, that, that stuff frustrates me, but like, again, the core gameplay is still really fun. Like I was on running, uh, like the nightfall and doing heroic strikes with, uh, with Lex, friend of the show Lex, Very nice. uh, with my, my, my good friend Dom and a few and other people that roll, roll in the, the Narcats, uh, uh, guild, <laughs> the uh, Narcats guild is back. Uh, yeah. Like, in a big way, in a way it never really went away. Well, that's true because we mentioned the Narcats guild on episode one of Game Moose. Yeah. That yeah. was a long time ago. On this one we're still rolling deep that's because that was that yeah. when it was when lex and you were on the show and yeah. you guys both talked all about destiny that yeah. whole show uh the the guys tried to well lex tried at one point uh six of us from the the the, the, the clan from the narcats were on uh, last night and lex tried to talk us into to running the raid and i'm like nope it's uh one o'clock in the morning on a thursday and i'm not doing that <laughs> uh so uh, or was it Friday? Well, he's on California like, time, so for him it's not one a.m. No, but obviously for you it is. It, it, it is, yeah. He's on he's on Pacific time. The rest of us aren't. But also, yeah. like, it gets daunting. You know, just the idea of like, yeah, it's a six hour commitment, and if you leave, you're fucked. Yep. Right. That's that that's, sucks. That's, that's exactly how MMO raids work. I know, so and that's I get that. I get that like. The challenge is is valuable, but like I want I want to see in in all of these games make the checkpointing better, right? Or or just like easier because uh, like the whole thing is like you can checkpoint in the in the raid there, but then like you have to be uh like it's like the leader the checkpoint gets tied with the the raid leader, and it it doesn't seem to be so that's a really weird it's, it's not really uh, uh, highlighted in the GUI very clearly, yeah. you know like. That stuff kind of annoys me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just means that, like, as an adult, it means the raid is somewhat inaccessible to me. Right. You know, like, well, that's the reason why I didn't really do it that often. I, I think I only did Vault of Glass once, and I think that was all the raiding I ever did in Destiny. Because yeah. Number one, it was tough to put together a group, especially if you didn't have a guild. Yeah. Like I didn't. But then number two, yeah, it's the time commitment. Thing. Yeah. I really like Vault of Glass. Vault of Glass, uh, you could do relatively quickly. Yeah. Well, uh, that's one of the things I liked about it. But it was just yeah. like. But then um, when Cortis Aim again came around, I was like, nope, there's no real reason for me to want to do this. Yeah, yeah. So um, it, it, it's uh, it's still a great game. It's still a flawed game. Still having fun, though. Yeah. Well, the main thing is hopefully this expansion at least helps it be better. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, Ryan? Yeah? Um, we want to talk about our first topic this week. It's first topic? We're like 20 minutes into the show already. Right, I mean, topic we, one. We're talking about what we've been playing, <laughs> but let's talk about the uh, the big old topic Roo there. All right. So first of all, before we get into this topic, uh, Drew and I needed to discuss this uh, before the show because this is a topic that, in case you've been living under a rock, you kind of already know about. Um, so we're going to get into sort of um, the, the topic itself, how it happened, and then we're going to sort of try and... Again, we w- the main thing is that we wanted to push about this topic. First of all, the topic, you probably already guessed it right now. Philip from IGN's article about uh, Dead Cells, his review of Dead his Cells. His review of Dead Cells yeah. and the uh, the accusations of plagiarism against him. The main, the main idea, though, we wanted to sort of strive with this topic before we get into it, though, is that we didn't 
They've been, I, at least I know personally, I've seen a lot of people dogpiling on Phil. They, they want They basically make it. There are tons of uh, opinion pieces out there about this. Uh, um, people sending death threats to Phil. Um, a lot of negativity surrounding that. And th- as the Game Moose podcast, we always never want to come into a topic in a negative way. Yeah. Or we don't want it to be about the negativity, essentially. I mean, I will say things like, I think Cliffy B is an asshole. Yeah. Uh, because that's how I feel personally. But, I mean, regardless... But yeah. you're not coming into, like, the topic of Cliffy B with, like, this vendetta of hate. No, no. And it's, I, I, I don't, I, I like Cliffy, I don't like Cliffy B for the things he does and the ways he behaves, because I think it hurts a lot of people. Um, and we can talk about that in a, in a different yeah. way. But, and, and the same thing here, I, I think what, uh, what Philip has done is not great. No. Uh, the, and the course of events, um, Especially don't he, look favorably on, on him at all. Right. But... He doesn't need, uh, and 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 the world doesn't need another group of people saying he's a fucking asshole. Like right. that's exactly that's not going to be helpful. And also, the people who are talking about this stuff are essentially in 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 broad pictures. The people who who have a voice and who are discussing this the most are the people who are perceivably the victims in this particular situation right. at, at large. Right? That it it paints video games journalism very poorly. Uh, and it uh, it makes and there's already a, ma- a certain amount of tension between YouTubers and, and conventional video game journalists anyway, right. and this just further entrenches those lines. And we don't want to worsen that situation because no. we kind of straddle the line between those two things. We strive to be more of a conventional yeah. publication. That's yeah. what we want to be. We want to do this as our full time job one day. Uh, that may or may not happen, but we try. Yeah. Uh, and we don't want to be influencers. That's not the the approach we take. It we have a stance of like we have our, our own sort of code of journalistic ethics that we try to follow. We try to be uh, we try to be objective and we try to share the truth of stories and we try to uh, also give you our own perspective and make sure that you understand what all of those things are. Yeah. So to that end, let's Ryan, let's talk about the facts of this story, what we know so far in terms of what the timeline was and how 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 it came out. Yeah. So first of all, uh, for those who don't know, Dead Cells is a Metroidvania game. Which it I'm was, very excited to play, by the way. Yeah, it looks really cool. Um, it was in early access for about a year or so. Um, and so um, Boomstick Gaming, who is the YouTuber um, in question here, uh, he created a review for Dead Cells a few weeks ago, uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, uh, when it was in early when access. When it was in early access, essentially. Yeah. Um, so, of course... Um, IGN and many other major outlets reviewed the game for its final release yeah. um, coming up. And Philip um, Mushin, I think I'm saying his name right. Perhaps. It's spelled weird. Uh, he was the reviewer. He basically, the, he was the Nintendo editor for IGN. He was like the, the person who Nintendo was his beat, essentially. Yeah. So he, he covered games on the Nintendo platform. Um, so if he was reviewing a multi-platform game, he'd yeah. be reviewing it from the Nintendo angle. Yeah, he was like basically the main, like the face of IGN's Nintendo coverage, essentially. That was the idea. Yeah. Um, he was filling in for Jose Otero, who left to go work for Nintendo. So um, Philip posted his review of Dead Cells, uh, both in video and uh, written form, because that's how I, all IGN v- reviews are done. The videos, uh, who for people who don't watch too many IGN videos, generally the video is always no more than three minutes and is very much just the main beats of what you need to know. Yeah, and then the the written review is where they go into more detail. And oftentimes, the video, the portions of the video that that are spoken are almost like reading from the written review, like it's a script. Exactly, which yeah. is what happened in this game, which is how Boomstick Gaming realized this came about. So, yeah. um, from what we can tell, uh, Boomstick Gaming, the the person again, I don't know his name, he uh, watched the review, the video review. Notice it was very similar to his own. Yeah, uh, both sort of in, in wording, phraseology, and opinion. Yeah, right. It's it's important to note all of these things. Not just he liked. It wasn't just that Philip liked the same things that Boomstick liked. Uh, it's that he worded them in, in similar. It was ways. basically like sentence structure, yeah. things like that. Worded. Um, so then, uh, upon reading the written review, it very much seemed almost like a transcript. Like reading a transcript of his YouTube review, yeah, essentially, because because Boomstick Gaming doesn't he he's only a YouTuber he doesn't write written v- reviews or anything like that. So yeah. um, you might be asking, well, how does a how does a uh, person who doesn't get written reviews ha- get plagiarized with a written review? Well, the answer is it was basically a, a YouTube transcript. 
So uh, Boomstick re- released a video uh, called IGN Stole My my Dead Cells Review, What Do I Do? Which has over a million views at this point, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's, a, a, it's a fair amount. Yeah. And keeping in mind that IGN is one of the largest video game websites and like like journalistic entities in the world right yeah. now. Right? Well, I would say like from the public perception, I would say it's probably like the biggest video game website, period. Yeah. Like, and, this is a go-to for a lot of people. Essentially, it's 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 like IGN, GameSpot, mm-hmm. and who else? Like, those are the two yeah. biggest. Those are the, the two ones. That they're like the faces of video game reviews. And like, yeah. there are a lot of other sites as well, but those are like the go-to. They're really, really big ones, and yeah. they've been around for a very long time. So, yeah. so um, after, after Boomstick re- released the video, and it started getting traction online, like, I started seeing, um, in fact, we didn't talk about this on the last podcast, but it happened around, like, Basically, like, after we recorded last week's episode, yeah. this is when it started to come about. This was Sunday. Yeah. Um, after that, uh, Jason Schreier Kodaku, um, of course, saw the video and then did some digging himself and, and found that there were striking similarities between the written review and then what was on uh, Boomstick's video, video, essentially. Yeah. And again, uh, the similarities in in phraseology and stuff like that. Like if you, you're just looking at the sentence structure, like yeah. similar things. Like he would basically take the, the second half of boomstick sentence and put it at the first half of the sentence and then take the first half and basically switch. Them. It, it had the appearance of that. Yeah. Certainly. Or he would, you basically use a thesaurus yeah. to come up with different words that mean the same thing. Yeah. In certain sentences. And, and, and that were literally looked like they were literally copy pasted. Uh, and, and from the appearance of it, uh, I mean, we can't say this for certain, but it seems like there was far too many, of these instances, like mm-hmm. there was, it, it shared too much in common for it to be a coincidence. Right. So then, what ended up happening after uh, Trier's article came out is uh, IG, uh, IGN uh, reviews editor Dan Stapleton, he's yeah. like sort of the head of reviews at IGN, um, quickly tweeted out uh, basically that the review had been taken down and they were basically looking into it. In fact, the page basically for the IGN review redirected to a page saying, hey, this video, this review has been pulled down until further notice. We're looking, we're investigating. Yeah, they're, they're investigating yeah. the claim. Yeah. So then I believe it was Wednesday, I yeah. want to say, uh, a new statement from IGN came out stating that um, the review was had been pulled because they had found evidence uh, that this, that this has basically been plagiarized. Yeah. So it was going. The, the game was going to be re-reviewed, which it was by yeah. Brandon Tyrell, um, and the review got pretty much the same score. It got a nine point five instead of a nine point seven. But come on, that's yeah. That, that's I mean, the point that, is everybody's loving peanuts. this game. In yeah. The, in that regard. Yeah. So it, and uh, there was a big formal apology to both Boomstick Gaming as well as the publisher of Dead Cells as well on behalf of IGN. On behalf of IGN. Yeah. Not not of Philip. Yeah. Uh, and in the IGN statement. Uh, it mentioned that Philip had been let go from IGN. Yeah, so he was basic, essentially terminated as a result of this. Right. Which is, uh, that's tough, man. Yeah. Uh, getting fired is no good. Yeah, so I believe on Friday, mm-hmm. Philip released his own sort of uh, statement because he didn't release any Twitter statements. In fact, literally up until Friday, uh, his Twitter page uh, hadn't been updated and his newest tweet was, check out my Dead Brit- Cell re- review on IGN here. Yeah. Um, kind of thing. So he released a video on his own YouTube channel, which uh, for those who don't know about Philip or his history, Philip actually started as a YouTuber, yeah. basically focusing on Nintendo content. He had his own podcast and sort of that's how he got the job at IGN in the first place. Yeah. Um, so on Philip's YouTube page, he posted, quote unquote, what I would refer to in quotes as an apology. It, even though the the name of the video wasn't that it was an apology, it was like my my response to the IGN Dead Cells review. Yeah, my my response, and he opens with I take full responsibility for for what happened for what happened, but he doesn't say I committed plagiarism or I'm sorry uh, or, or explain why it happened. Did yeah. it happen? He did sort of gleam. We did see some gleaming into that where he, in the review, uh, or sorry, in the video, in the video he talks about how. When he was writing his Dead Cells review, he played, first of all, he played through the whole game. Yeah. There, there's actually, um, there are people at IGN who attested to this as well, that Philip actually played the game from start to finish. Yeah. But when he was writing his review, according to what he says in the video, um, he, uh, because it was an early access game, he decided to look at other reviews yeah. just to see where other people fell on the game as a whole. Yeah. Which is a big no-no from yeah. someone who, from people who, who write reviews yeah. because you should ne- like other, because that even if you don't plagiarize something, 
you should never look at other reviews before you write your own because that can influence your opinion of the game. Because yeah. yeah. um, that can prevent you from, for example, if you didn't really like it, but other people did, it might change. It might be like, okay, well, I don't want to be the the one guy who doesn't like this game, so I'll just change my score to be favorable. Yeah, um, I will. I will watch let's plays of people playing games, <laughs> and I will communicate with other people who are reviewing the same game, but I will not watch or read other reviews until after I have written, done the first draft of my review. Because yeah. I will do that, I, sometimes I'll want to check to make sure things are like, are factually correct, or... Or um, or if you're writing about bugs in a game, you yeah. want to like usually ask people if they're experiencing the same thing. Yeah, and sometimes you want to just make sure that your tone is in line, like, you know, there, there are things that like, you know... You want to make just make sure that it's just like because you, you can get in your own head with stuff, especially like from us uh, as an outlet, because first of all, we're in a generous position where a lot of times we're able to receive early copies from from publishers. But in some cases, we don't. Yeah. And then we but a lot of times if we still want to review the game. Yeah. Um, and after it comes out. Uh, I, I I know at least for me I personally make it a policy of mine that if I know before that we don't we're not receiving a game early that I want to review yeah. I don't look at any reviews or read any coverage of that game yeah uh, because I want I want to go in with as blank of a slate as possible yeah so that the the opinion I'm giving you is the opinion formed from me playing the game only and not influenced by outside factors yeah which is why like for example uh, and likewise. Um, a game like State of Decay 2, for example, yeah. I'm really proud of that review mm. because even though – and the reason why – even yes, we were provided the game early. But one of the reasons why I'm proud of it is that because we received it early or because I didn't read other reviews of State of Decay 2, I, did, I wasn't influenced by people not liking the game. Yeah. And I, I, the reason I'm proud of that review is because I gave a different slant. I actually really like that game. Yeah, I know a lot of people didn't, including you and Brock. Well, yeah. At least Brock. I didn't know. I, we didn't I, talk I, about you. I didn't. I, I didn't play it yeah. enough to to have a strong opinion. Whereas on it. Brock really didn't like that game. Yeah, and it's. Um, but that might not have happened if I took Philip's approach. Yeah. From from his video, if I would have looked at State of Decay reviews ahead of time, I might been like, might have been like, might I might have felt compelled not to be on that other side of the fence. Yeah, and there and there is something else that we need to talk about here, and that is. This is not meant to excuse uh, Philip's behavior of in any not. way, um, but I, I do want to say that. So first of all, uh, again, we're we're not in the exact same position as him. No, he does that full time, right? right? All he does is review games. It's not it's not as easy as you might think it is, no. right? Uh, it sounds like from the outside, it sounds like a dream job. You play video games and and then you tell people what you think about them. Mm. But reviewing a game is not the same as just playing it and having fun with it. Mm -hmm. um, you, Especially if it's, a if it's a game you hate. Yeah, which, I mean, for me, has happened a couple of times. There have been a couple of games that I've reviewed that I didn't like. I, like, I ended up having to spend way more time with Avon Colony than I ever wanted to. Because uh, I went into it with the expectation of, oh, yeah, a, a fucking city-building game in space that sounds dope. <laughs> and, like, rapidly disliked it. Um, didn't hate it. it. Like, it's not a bad game. It's still worth playing. Go, yeah. go read my review if you want to see what I wrote about it. But, like, that was one of those things where, like, I spend more time with it than I wanted to. Right. But then, like, you have to do things like keep notes and stuff like that. You want to make sure that you're being as detailed as possible. Like, it's not it's not all fun in games. There's parts right. of it that, that are, it's work, and it can be quite exhausting. Especially if it's your career. Yeah. It's a job. And yeah. it changes the way you think about games. Yeah, and how you approach things. I mean, as a person who has had multiple professional jobs where that have transitioned from hobbies. Uh, you know, I work, I work in film and television, uh, that started as a hobby. Uh, I worked for, uh, like a board game company, uh, that started as a hobby, you know, like when it transitions from hobby to work, it becomes a very different thing. And, you know, like I played video games and now we, you know, we have the, the website is, is more of a job, even though, yeah. you know, we're, we're still scraping by monetarily. Um, you know, it it, it 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 does. It changes your perspective on things. And so I will give him the benefit of that one that it's a lot of work and it's really hard. Mm -hmm. And I can see him wanting to find shortcuts to finish that. Or you can see quickly. the temptation. Yeah. The temptation is there to do Absolutely. That. Now, 
since uh, since his statement was made and since Jason published his article, more stuff has come out. Right, because in the video, yeah, we should mention this, in the video, he's like, Jason Schreier, I know you dug dug up some stuff on me. You're not going to find anything else. I dare you to look more. Yeah. Well, Jason looked more. I'm not sure. Is that how we worded it? He he said it in a flippant stance like that. That's why I sort of okay. played it up a bit. So uh, essentially, uh, Jason went digging and found a lot more. Um I mean, you can go read Jason's article yourself on Kotaku. Yeah. Uh, one of the things is one of the things that he mentioned uh, is that there was an article for uh, Samus Returns, right, uh, or a review for Samus Returns, oh my God. where so again good. there there are similar things again um, in terms of like phraseology, where where it appears as though sort of it's it's it looks like it's been copied. Yeah. Um, you know, it seems like, again, too much of a – it would be way too much of a coincidence to have that exact same phraseology. And no, before we go any further with this, I should mention that the in Jason's article, all of the instances that came up anyways in this newest article um, were all from his pre-IGN days, from when he was a YouTuber. Right. So that's important to establish for – because I know a lot of people, again yeah. – we talked about it before how this is sort of a – YouTuber against yeah. gaming website, but this is when he was a YouTuber. This is when he was a YouTuber. Uh, and so, yeah, and, and even at that, there was a factual error in the review that he allegedly had plagiarized yeah. from, or he appears to have plagiarized from, yeah. that he he also copied said factual error. Like, right. he identified the wrong button. Yeah, like it was the right trigger instead of the left, left trigger. trigger. Yeah. And then he made that same factual error, and we just saw that on Twitter for, uh, this morning. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it really seems like this is a pattern of behavior with him mm -hmm. in terms of, like, uh, he he plagiarizes work. I'm sure he doesn't do it because he wants to. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I recognize the pressures of being a YouTuber and being a conventional journalist with the expectation of... You've got to get that, there first. You've, you've got, got deadlines. Yeah, you've got deadlines. You've got to put out content on a schedule. That's fucking hard, man. Mm -hmm. And I pre And the temptation is there for all of us to reach there. I don't know about you, Ryan, but for me, my passion when I'm doing this, and at least it's because we're our own bosses, we can set our own pace. Yeah. Um, but my passion is for sharing my perspective, mm -hmm. right? Like, I enjoy telling the story of how I discover things in games and stuff like that, um, which is, uh, you know, why, like, one of the reasons why we do the podcast and why we do the podcast the way we do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's really... I, I, for that reason, I sympathize with him a, a tiny, tiny bit, but also, come on, man, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah, you like, know, this is one of those things where, like, you don't have to be a journalism major from school yeah. to know you don't steal other people's stuff. And this is uh, one of the reasons why he's probably getting slammed so much in the press is because there is a code of ethics, and even that beyond that, there's there's just. You, there's a, we feel a level of sort of like camaraderie and 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 uh, sort of community with other people that do that stuff with right. us. Like we've talked about this before, when we go to events and stuff and see the other people that cover things for the other outlets, they feel like family at this point. You know, like we all go to the same things. We all it's always the same group of people. Yeah, we always talk about the stuff the same way. Like yeah, there is there's a, a sense of warmth and sharing there. Yeah, and and that. This kind of stuff, this the plagiarism stuff feels like a betrayal of that. Right. Right. Um, that, that you would sort of betray the community in that way. Yeah. And Especially I when you're working at the biggest outlet in gaming. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty big break. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I could see why people are very upset with him uh, yeah. in, in that regard. Yeah. Uh, and also his uh, his 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 response. Yeah. Not great. No. <laughs> it was pretty tone deaf. Uh, he. He probably needs to take a break, sit back and take a look at what's happened. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, just kind of step back from from stuff for a while and 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 kind of think about, you know, did what he did. Was it OK? Um, try to maybe th think from the perspective of people like Boomstick. Yeah. And, and other journalists and think about what would have happened if the your position was reversed. Yeah, and, like what would happen if someone stole one of his reviews? Yeah, put like put it, put it put your feet in someone else's shoes, Phil. Uh, uh, let's see let's see how that goes. Um, in, in the meantime, uh, you know, if he ever hopes to have any kind of career, even as a a YouTuber or a professional gaming journalist, he's really got to make good. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what's what he probably wants to do is shut up for a while. Yeah, you know. Like sort of just take everything offline for six months, like not take down his videos, but like stop, like don't produce any more content for six more months. Come back sort of reinvigorated and hopefully that'll turn things around, like like make sure to be honest about 
sort of what happened and, and what your practices are and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this mostly serves as a cautionary tale for, because I know that we have a, a, actually a large group of listeners that make their own content. Yeah. This is more of a cautionary tale for what not to do when you're creating content, because not every again, not everyone goes to journalism school or l- like you learn about plagiarism when you're in high school, when you're writing essays for the first time, but not a lot of people like, uh, pursue careers where they learn more about plagiar- plagiarism in this sense. So the main, the main, the takeaway from this or the main lesson should be don't steal other people's stuff. That That's pretty much all you yeah. need to know about this. Cool. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, not cool, but you know, so that's, that's that, that's uh, that. that is that topic. Um, yeah, I, I hate that we have to talk about this. No, um, not. you know, but it's definitely, it's a subject. It's something important. we had to talk about. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I know, uh, I know some other people are sort of talking about it in, in the community and yeah, yeah. Well, yeah lot, lots of opinions are out there at this point. Oh, you, this. you bet. Yeah. And again, for good reason, uh, the, the, the sort of the, the people who cover games, uh, feel like a community and, and, and it's a relatively small one. Right. Uh, so it, it's no surprise that people would be upset about this. Yeah. Okay. So next topic, and we're going to have to go through these a bit quickly. So let, we're going to talk about the Smash Direct. There's a Smash Direct d- d- this week, Drew. Drew, of course, big fan of, of Smash Brothers. Biggest fan of Smash Brothers, as I can tell. He loves Smash Brothers so much. I'm a huge Smash Brothers <laughs> fan. <laughs> now, to be fair, the reason I wanted to talk about this, of course, was this Smash Direct is like the most Ryan Turford set of announcements ever uh, for Smash Brothers. So uh, they announced some new fighters this time around, including Simon Belmont. From Castlevania, which we had sort of predicted long ago coming to this game. Uh, of course, though, the surprise announcement for for Castlevania, though, Richter also in this game as well. Yeah, he's like a um, he's an echo fighter of Simon. Yeah, he has a lot of the same moves, but they they all look different and feel sort of very true to that character. Yeah, which is kind of cra- crazy. What is a man? He's just a miserable a pile, pile of, of secrets. Of secrets. But but Dracula's in this game too. Richard. Yeah, he's a boss. Yeah. So uh, there's actually a whole uh, Castlevania stage mm-hmm. that has bosses from uh, the first Castlevania game, including the mummy, the the werewolves, the the Frankenstein and Igor, and then of course Dracula himself. This is all very say. exciting because I love those games. Um, also, the Castlevania stage has 34 pieces of Castlevania music on it, Drew. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We've both, already heard some of them. Both new arrangements and then. Yeah. Um, Classic, like there's going to be eight bit songs you can play like that. The vampire killer theme in eight bit will be there if you want it. Yeah. So they also announced a couple other epic O fighters, including Krom from Fire Emblem and then Dark Samus, which uh, Dark Samus looks awesome. Yeah. I, I yeah. can't wait to play as Dark Samus because she's basically like Sam- like normal Samus, but she's got cool moves. Mm-hmm. And the other ca- surprise character, of course, uh, the Riley Litter- Little on Twitter. Of course, freaking out about this one. Oh yeah, King K. Rule. King K. Rule from Donkey Kang. Donkey Kang. Donkey Kang. Is, Donkey it, Kong. It's literally like they basically took the uh, uh, the Smash Brothers poll from uh, when they ran it when before the Wii U version came out, and then just took all the most popular characters from that, and they're all in this game. Yeah, somehow. Yeah, uh, good to see uh, more Donkey Kong characters in this game because we've had uh, we've had Diddy and we've had uh, well, Donkey Di- and Donkey Kong for a long time. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, but it seemed weird. It seemed like, like that game was a little underserved. Yeah. I still think, and I, um, this is something that, uh, kind of funny is Tim Geddes has talked about. I still think at some point Dixie Kong will be an echo fighter of Diddy. That would make sense. At some point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm still pretty sure that that's going to happen. Uh, so that, because again, it sounded like from the, the direct, there will be even more smash announcements as we go around. There's I mean, a new mode, um, on the, the main menu that they haven't even talked about it yet. Yeah. At this at this point, like the roster is insane. There's like a, like eighty characters. Yeah. Like, how do you keep going from here, man? Well, I, th- I still think there are probably going to be at least like four more fi- echo echo fighters. Yeah. Um, like one of the ones I still think that Proto Man could still be an echo fighter. Yeah. In this game, like a, a, a echo fighter of Mega Man. That'd be great. Um, or Though, like I I kind of feel like Proto Man could be his own thing. Yeah. Um. Well, I I also think that Shadow. Shadow the Hedgehog could yeah. be a character. Yes. Um, but he's got guns. Well, they they don't need to give him guns in this. He, he, Shadow the Hedgehog exists without guns, Drew. I don't know if you knew this. Um, they could also do uh, someone like Liquid Ocelot or someone like like um, another Metal Gear character. They have Gray Fox as a, as a uh, assist trophy in this game. 
but they could also branch out and do some more. Like, I could see them doing more with the, the third party characters. Even, like, someone like uh, Zack from Final Fantasy VII could be an Echo Fighter of Cloud. Like, that, that's just a no brainer idea, almost. Especially since they're basically the same person. Yeah. They also announced, though, that there are 100 plus stages in this game from you to choose from. Uh, and so basically, almost all of the old stages are returning, except for a couple that were reworked in later games. For example, Planet, Planet Zebes in the original Smash Brothers. Um, was basically re- revamped to be Brinstar in Melee, and only Brinstar is returning because they don't need to have two versions of the same stage, kind of. Uh, there is also eight hundred total songs in the game um, from all across the uh, the the uh, characters in this game. Although there's nine hundred songs if you include the menu music in this game, which is kind of crazy. So big music nerd like me. Is going to freak out about this. You can also turn your Switch into a music player, Drew. Mm. They had this little trailer of the this Japanese woman taking her Switch and putting it into her purse, listening to the music, just going down the street. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. So those were all the big announcements from the Smash Brothers Direct. I'm more hyped about this game, but I'm still like, I'm still not a huge fan of Smash. I think Brock's probably the biggest fan of Smash at our, at, on the podcast. Um, so it's too bad he's not here to talk about it. But yeah, yeah. I, I think these are cool announcements, especially for someone like me who loves Castlevania. It, it's awesome to see um, just what like Simon Belmont looks in a modern game. Yeah, because it's been uh, Lords of Shadow uh, Two was the last Castlevania game. Yeah, and, and that was terrible. Yeah, but that was like I think that was 2013. It was like the the year the PlayStation Three uh, PlayStation Four came, 4 out. came out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while since we've had essentially a, a, a modern Castlevania. And Castlevania has struggled to transition to... 3D. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Lords of Shadow 1 was pretty good, but like yeah. all the rest of them have not been that great. Yeah. Cool. So the last thing I wanted to talk about before we got into the news this week, QuakeCon happened this week. Yeah. And there's some cool things. So first of all, I should mention, because we're not going to do another what we've been playing segment, but I played Quake Champions this week, Drew, for the first time. Nice. I actually really like it. It's kind of like a, um, it's kind of like Quake Three Arena, mm. but mixed with Overwatch, where you have like hero characters, Good and it's kind of like hero characters from all the other Bethesda franchises because you've also got um, Doom Guy in in it. You've got yeah. BJ Blazkowicz, yeah, and and some other characters. Like that's really cool. Yeah, uh, it was a really fun game. I was actually pretty impressed with it. I'm a little sad that it's never coming to consoles. They confirmed at QuakeCon yeah. it will never come to consoles ever. Um, but it was launched as a free-to-play game this week, so it was officially cool. launched this week. Ah, yeah, very exciting. Yeah. Um, so QuickCon, we got some cool glimpses um, of some upcoming games, including Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal looks cool as hell. We got we got the first sort of game. Pl- they basically had like 20 minutes of gameplay yeah. from the game, and it looks fucking incredible, as you mentioned. So, yeah. Uh, the first location they showed was Earth, where basically Earth had been taken over by the demons. Yep. It looked really cool. You have a super shotgun that has a grappling hook on it. Yeah. We're now like, they basically took this fast fluid motion of Doom 2016 and then amped it up by like 10, 10 points. Yeah, it's called, the, it's called the meat hook. It's called the meat hook. Uh, it can only grapple into uh, demons, like li- like flesh yeah. creatures. So into enemies, essentially. And it basically allows you to zip around from enemy to enemy. Yeah. So yeah. not only do you have the double jumps, you have uh, the, the the regular boost, but then you have a double boost on yeah. top, combined with the, gra- the the meat hook, really added some like interesting complexities to the yeah. gameplay. So the traversal is pretty nuts. Yeah. yeah. Which, of course, you need it because on the Earth stage, for example, they showed like a million fucking demons on that level. Like yeah. You'd go into combat arenas and there'd be like 20 demons and you have to figure out how to kill them. Essentially, like cycling around in, in these arenas, sort of like, you know. Yeah. Uh, jumping around from enemy to enemy to enemy. Yeah. Caco demons eating and swallowing grenades. <laughs> Just crazy shit, man. Crazy shit. Yeah. Um, they also showed a new area called Phobos, which is like a space station where there are still humans. I guess they're the humans that escaped from Earth, but again, yeah. they didn't go too much into Ph- about how that works. Uh, Phobos is a moon of, uh, of Mars. There you go. Phobos and Deimos. Yeah. Um, and then you fight some demons out there. And it looks really cool. And there, there's this final shot um, at the end of Phobos where the the uh, Doom guy pulls out basically this beam sword. Yeah. And he's about to go to te- te- go toe to toe with this demon. It looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, fun fact: the original Doom takes place uh, the the first um, the the first two expansions take place on Phobos and Deimos. Okay. Yeah. See, I didn't play those. So yeah. I didn't, I didn't know how that worked. Uh, yeah. They, they, way back, knee deep and dead is like the whole thing is the, the you're on uh, I think it's Phobos. Or is it Deimos? One of the two. The idea is that's where like they first do the experiments. Okay, uh, is on these two moons, and then eventually go to hell and 
mm-hmm. you know, and and from there. But one of the cool things they talked about at the the panel was that um, they basically wanted to expand the Doom lore and have it take place in more places, like go to places that they've never gone before. So, for example, they showed one area that looked a lot like heaven. Like, it sounds like you might go to heaven in this game. Um, There's also a renewed sense of um, sort of a renewed focus on environmental storytelling, which was a big part of Doom 2016, which is why it was, uh, as someone who is a big fan of games like Metroid, that's one of the things that made Doom 2016 such a standout game for me back when I played it. Also, it lo- I love yeah. the fact that Mick Gordon is back doing the music because the music is still like uh, sort of heavy metal all over again, and it still sounds awesome. Yeah, um, I-, I love Mick Gordon. He does some awesome music. So I can't wait to play Doom Eternal. It's probably my most anticipated game of next year. One game that surprised me as well that they showed was Rage, Rage 2, yeah. which actually looked pretty cool. From what from what I saw, like they, they it kind of looks like they took all the open world stuff that uh, Avalanche did with Mad Max, what they did really well with that, and then sort of combine it with sort of the Doom gameplay, which we talked about a little bit when we did our Bethesda E3 reacts. But this time around, it looked like it went away from sort of the like uh, Technicolor, like neon. Uh, smoke stuff that they had going on in the trailers. Yeah. Like the, it moved away from Andrew, Andrew WK for a second yeah. and sort of focused on what this game actually is. And it, I think it looks much more appealing than it did with any of the trailers they've shown before. Yeah, that, that marketing campaign is a little weird. Yeah. Like if they would have stuck to this sort of direction, I feel like it probably would have been more widely received yeah. when they first showed it, I think. But yeah, I think Rage 2 actually looks pretty cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually excited to play it. And yeah, they they also had uh, a follow up panel, which I don't have all the details about because it was happening while while we're recording. Yeah. Uh, but we heard some interesting things about it. Stuff like, um, like PvP uh, pl- uh, when it, it's turned on, uh, players griefing other players. That there are some uh, basically some disadvantages for that happening. Mm-hmm. There's a whole bunch of follow details. So check out uh, Bethesda's page if you want to learn more about that. Unfortunately, it, like I said, we just didn't have any a lot of details before we started today. Yeah. Cool. So let's run through the news before we go. Uh, and, and it's basically a lot of release date announcements this week, which is really cool. So Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight and Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight, a.k.a. the Persona Rhythm games. Yeah. Uh, both have North American release dates. They were already released in Japan, but are now coming stateside on December 4th to PS4 and Vita. Um, a separate collector's edition called the Et- Endless Night Collection includes both games on PS4 as well as a PS4 version of Persona 4 Dancing All Night, mm-hmm. which was a Vita exclusive. Right. Now all three will be on PS4. As, as someone who loves the music in all the Persona games, I can't wait to play this. Because I also really like rhythm games. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if you like rhythm games and you like Persona, this is made for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so next up, Bandai Namco has announced that uh, two games in the Taiko Drum Master series are finally hitting North American shores. This is exciting news because the Taiko Drum Master series, as far as I'm aware, has never come to North America. It's always been huge in Japan. It's basically a game where you play a set of drums and it's an arcade game in Japan. It's super popular. Um, so one of the, basically uh, one's coming to PS4 and one's coming to Switch. Both games will have all the music in their Japanese counterparts, uh, including music from Disney movies, Dragon Ball Super, and other franchises. Cool. Yeah. So both release on November 7th, 2nd. I'm really excited about that. Uh, next up, Ubisoft, Ubisoft has announced that both Valiant Hearts and Child of Light are coming to Nintendo Switch. Child of Light will arrive on October 11th, while Valiant Hearts will arrive on November 8th. Fun fact about this, though, on Patrick uh, Polarone's I, I, th- I hope I pronounced that correctly. He's basically a creative director at Ubisoft Montreal who worked on Child of Light. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, on his Twitter page, when he made this announcement, he also had this little tease on his desk of a piece of paper that said Child of Light 2 written on it. Ooh, yeah. very sneaky. So it sounds like, barring some kind of crazy, crazy thing, that Child of Light 2 is coming. Yeah. Uh, did you ever play Child of Light at Ultra? I played five minutes of it, I think. Okay. Yeah. It's a cool game. Yeah. I, I mean, it's. I really liked it. Yeah. Um, it was a cool RPG that just, I think a lot of people just didn't play. It was yeah. in the UB, UB Yard engine, just yeah. like uh, Rayman was. Yeah. Real, real gorgeous game. Yeah. Absolutely. For yeah. sure. Um, and then Valiant Hearts, I've never played it, but I've heard really good things about it. Yeah. Uh, I didn't play Valiant Hearts uh, largely because. I think it was going to be a little too heavy for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I can handle that, especially part of it. You plays a dog. Yeah. I'm not okay with that, that. poor dog. Yeah. I mean, I get that they had to like 
what the, I respect what they were doing. It's just too much for me sometimes. Like, there are times where yeah. like, I don't watch heavy. I hear that's films. just a really, really, really sad game. Yeah, it's real, real gut wrencher. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, next up, we got two Square Enix stories to round everything out. So, Square Enix have announced the release date for The World Ends With You Final Remix. Thank fucking God, because I can't wait for that. Yeah. It comes to Nintendo Switch on October 12th, and it's a Nintendo Switch exclusive. So. Yeah. Guess what I'm doing October 12th? Not playing that game? No, playing. I love that game. I've said that multiple times on the show. Wait, that's the same day Battlefield comes out. Uh, I'm definitely not playing Battlefield. <laughs> Fair enough. I just figured you'd still be playing like the like a jillion of other games. Well, yeah. To. No, I'm, that's I'm, the, that's I'm definitely excited for The World Ends With You. Yeah. Uh, I think I, the game's really cool. Yeah, this is one of those games where I'm really excited about it. But since I've already played it, I'm kind of I'm probably going to wait till like December to play it. I, I haven't played it since it first came out. So uh, okay. like in North America. So fair enough. And sticking with Square Enix, the official Japanese Bravely Default Twitter page tweeted out new art taking the Octopath Traveler 1 million seller art that they posted on their page and then flipping it around backwards. And apparently, I, I didn't notice this the first time, but apparently on the back it's got, um, it, it's basically in the shape of the fairy from Brave, Bravely Default, Yeah, the way they, they did that art. And it basically, um, they, they had that flipped around and then it had a cast a shadow on a brick wall behind it. Where it's definitely the fairy from Bravely Default. So um, it sounds like the tweet basically states uh, when they posted this that look forward to new games from Business Division 11. I love how Square Enix names their studio as Business D- Division 11. They're the studio that made Octopath Traveler. Um, yeah. And it sounds like there's a new Bravely Default game coming because they also made Bravely Default. So it's. It sounds like that's going to be a thing, and I'm excited because I, yeah. I like Bravely Default. It's a really good game. Bravely Second wasn't as good. I think, but Brave the Default, fantastic game, so I can't wait. So this week's new releases, we only got three of them, even though there's a, t- I think there's a lot of, like, smaller games that I've never heard of coming out this week. Like, if you look on the PlayStation blog this week, on the drop, there's, like, 30 games coming out this week, but yeah. I've never heard of any of them. Uh, so here are the three that we wanted to highlight. World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth, of course, I've already talked about it, so I won't talk about it again. Hashtag for the Alliance. Fuck the Horde. I'm gonna say it right now. Fuck the horde. Really? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Fiona McKinnon and Mr. Bad Bit, but fuck the horde. No, you're not a horde guy, huh? Well, to be fair, all my friends play alliance. Yeah. So uh, you sort of, when you play World of Warcraft, you usually gravitate to what faction your friends play. Yeah. That's usually how it works. Mm-hmm. But fuck the horde. All right. Uh, the Walking Dead, the final season, episode one, comes out on on Tuesday, mm. which actually looks pretty cool. There's they've been releasing trailers for it, and I'm, I'll play it probably the week after. Right. Um, and last but not least, a game I recommend for people, uh, Cosmic Star Heroin comes to Switch this week. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's really good. If you want to check out my review, go to brockstaryaming.com. Yeah. Brock's website. I yeah. wrote that uh, for, the P- for the PS4 version last year. Yeah. And really liked it. Yes. Um, also, uh, it's. I always think it's cool to play like these, these retro games on your Switch. That's why yeah. I'm excited to play Mega Man, Man X back on my Switch again. It's, it's like coming home. feels like coming home. Yeah. yeah. And a game like Cosmic Star Heroin really, I think, fits on that platform. I, as, yeah, as, Even as, more as, than something like PS4. As a love letter to like those classic SNES uh, RPGs like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI and stuff well, like that. And, I think that game is more like a Sega CD game. It, it reminds me, it's, it's it's so Chrono Trigger to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I it also understand. doesn't take itself too ch- seriously, which no. I think is, if you've played Octopath Traveler, for example, and really like that game, this is like a good, like, palate cleanser from Octopath Traveler, because it's very, even though they're both, like, 2D RPGs that are trying to capture that magic again, they're very, they feel very different. Yeah. And that's one of the things I liked about that game. Cool. So yeah, so that's it for this week's show. But before yeah. we go, Drew Flugs go. Uh, I'm at Team McMillan on Twitter and go to game-boost.com for uh, the website stuff. Cool. Uh, you can find Brock McLaughlin, the Brocky Brock McLaughlin, over on Bro- uh, Twitter at Brock McLaughlin. Yep. You can also find his website, brockstargaming.com. And I don't have anything dirty to plug for no, him. No, we don't. There's no <laughs> Pornhub references. <laughs> no porn uh, references. Also, uh, go check out Newly Single Gamer on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, uh, get ready for uh, Bryn Potty being on the show next week. It'll be uh, fun to sit down and talk with him. I feel like I'm leaving the show in capable hands. Yeah. In worst case scenario, you know, it's Brock's fault. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah, we go. Absolutely. Uh, as for me, you can find me on Twitter at Ryan Trufer. That's T U R F O R D. Uh, you can also find the Game Moose podcast on uh, Twitter at Game underscore Moose underscore cast. On Facebook at Facebook.com slash Game Moose podcast. And podcast services around the world. Also, do you want to play World of Warcraft with me this week? Because I will be streaming it all week. You can add me on Battle.net at that Ryan guy. 
Hashtag seventeen oh five because battle battle dot net te- uh, names are really dumb. So again, that Ryan guy hashtag seventeen oh five. Add me on battle net and we'll do some dungeons or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, the again the full schedule for my streaming uh, will be up on gamishmoose.com by the time you're reading this mm. or listening to this. You're not really reading this podcast, are you? You could be. Yeah, I mean, you found a transcript somewhere on yeah, Google, you could, and you're reading it. You could have run it through uh, text to speech engine and read it. I don't know how you're doing that, but okay, cool. <laughs> Anyways, for Drew McMillan, I'm Ryan Turford. This has been episode 134 of the Game Moose Podcast, and we're out.